All right, hello everyone, Ken Mandich here, and welcome to the latest installment on what I'm probably going to be calling SEO Nation and getting your own SEO done. But first, let me start off with this video should be out on November 10th, which would be the United States Marine Corps' birthday. Let me say Semper Fi to all my Leatherneck brothers and sisters out there. And then tomorrow, which would be Tuesday the 11th, is Veterans Day. Thank you all the veterans that served before me, after me, and especially a big thanks to everyone that's still serving. We appreciate all you do for our country, and we still believe that this is the greatest country on the face of the planet. Okay, a couple quick disclaimers for you before we head over to my computer screen. Number one, I don't claim to be any kind of guru. I'm doing this just to give back. Yes, I have a very successful real estate business. Most of our leads do come from the internet. I also have affiliate websites, which just are out there making me money. They're really kind of cool because I get up in the morning and I get to look and see what kind of money I made the day before without really doing anything, just doing some SEO. All right, number two, I don't claim to be the world's best teacher, okay? I might stumble a little bit here and there. Truth be known, I've only had to teach this to a few people that actually work for me, all right? Number three, in this training, doing the basics, actually this is the ground floor. The stuff isn't sexy, it's kind of tedious, but it is very important. But we're gonna set up a WordPress site today. I'll show you my plugins that I like. Probably the next video is gonna be on keyword research. Again, this isn't really cool and sexy and all that. It's kind of nerdy, but it's very important. It's like the foundation of your house. If your foundation is messed up, your house is gonna fall, okay? So let's head over to my computer screen and get started. All right, so let's jump right in. If you read my last post, it was on picking the right URL for your website. You want to pick a .com, .net, .org. Reason being is Google likes those. You can get those to rank fairly easily on page one. The other ones are .info and the other ones, we've tested those and they're like extremely hard to get to rank on page one. So don't stack the deck against yourself from the start. Pick a .com, .net, .org. All right? Also, when you're getting the domain, the URL, I wouldn't bother getting the privacy. Reason being is Google kind of likes it when you're leaving yourself open. You're not, you're not trying to hide anything. The only problem with that is, is you'll end up getting emails, spam emails, and also phone calls that you don't want. So we'll show you a way to get around that, and that'll get you going. So again, pick your .com, .net, .org. All right. After you do that, you're gonna want to find your hosting. I actually like this one right here, A2 Hosting. Reason being is that their servers are very fast. At the rate that your website loads is a ranking factor inside of Google. And also, it pertains to your customers also. When's the last time that you stand on a page that took, you know, six, eight, ten seconds to load? You're going to click off. Google looks at it the same way, all right? So A2 is really, really good. It's a little bit more expensive. It's about $120 a year. Um, you can get cheaper hosting, but you're not going to get the speed. And the other thing too is, you know, if you do like a, uh, a search on Google for cheap hosting, you can find some, you can find them for as little as like $25 a year, but you want to make sure it has cPanel. Uh, the ones that don't have cPanel, they can be really hard to navigate and try and figure out how to get WordPress in there and separate emails and all that thing. So make sure it has cPanel. Okay. But A2 Hosting, we really love this one. All of all of my money sites are on A2 Hosting, all right? Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to go here to Web Hosting. And just you want to pick the Prime will work. Click Order Now. And then since you've already picked your domain, you're going to put this here. I already have a domain and you see I already put this in this is the one that I picked for our test site and you'll see that I picked a dot info I did something I told you not to do reason being it was cheap this is just a test site I'm just showing this I'm just doing this for you guys okay guys and gals all right so you'll fill this information in click to continue and you can pick all your billing stuff and blah 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 add to cart get it done then what else is going to happen? They're going to. It might take them a little bit to set up your account. I think they're pretty good. It's been a while since I had to set up a brand new one through a through a two. 
I think they'll get it done within a few minutes. Some of the hosts will take as long as 24 to 48 hours to get you the information for your account, which will be the name servers, how to log in through FTP, and all of those. Okay. So once you get that email, then you're going to go back to GoDaddy and you will go to that site that you have you see I got a bunch on here I'm gonna have to black those out and you once I click that I'll click off it see this all blank I click my site this lit up name servers set name servers custom I've already set them for this one what it'll be is it'll be standard when you get to it it's where they have it parked you go custom if you're using if you're using a2 hosting this is what it'll be ns3.a2hosting.com and ns4.a2hosting.com now if you're not using a2 hosting they'll have a different name server and it'll be in that email all right so you have to set them at name server save it and you're done okay the other thing is now we want to protect ourselves so if we just click this right here it brings up this page and we go to contacts and edit all contacts and it brings this up now you know you can leave your name you can change your address if you want put in you know put in a PO box or something especially for some of you realtors your ladies things are getting crazy out there these days I mean I hate hearing these stories on the news but you know put in a different address you know put in a PO box something the phone number it's not that important you can make up a number here if you want alright just put in a phone number there email this is important this needs to be a real email okay reason being is they're gonna verify this through that email okay just get a a Yahoo a Gmail an AOL a free account whatever alright and set it up and get in verify it, do whatever you have to do okay then put this then put that email address in here and click OK and then when you go back to your domains it'll tell you that it's pending update wherever it's at down here it'll tell you over here pending update so what you'll have to do is you'll have to log into that email account and then go ahead and wait for that email to come from GoDaddy click it the verification and it'll be done you'll be good to go and that way you'll have to worry about getting a bunch of spam email you know it's still gonna get it but it's gonna be going to that email that you're not worried about and the same thing with the phone number just make up a phone number now when it comes time to renew your domain don't worry about it. GoDaddy's going to find you. They've got you. They're going to use the information that you used when you first set up the account. Okay? So that gets us done there. So then next what we're going to do is log in to our C panel from A2 hosting whatever hosting you decide to choo choose from, okay? And that information will be in that in that email. A lot of sites will be whatever your domain is .com forward slash C panel until it's propagated though it's probably going to give you some numbers that you'll have to put in and it'll get you to this page once you to this page a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to the update contact info and the first thing I'm doing here is I'm changing this email address to that email address that I put on GoDaddy the one that I don't care about alright we'll change that and you save it um, you know you can come here you can add email accounts but what we want is going to be WordPress come all the way down here to Softaculous alright this is on A2 if you're using some other kind of uh, some other host besides A2 host they'll have a as long as you got one that has cPanel they'll have this if it doesn't have cPanel good luck I've been through several of them I have websites all over the place and I'm using some other ones that don't have cPanel and they are a pain in the butt it takes me a minute to sit down and figure them out 
so I prefer everything that I do now any sites that I build I'm putting them on something I make sure that that host has cPanel so it makes it much easier okay so you'll come down here and I'll show you too there's a reason why I really like a2 is because of some of the plugins they automatically add in all right so once I click that it comes to install and this is actually on I actually this is an add-on domain that I've done so for you when you do it, if it's just one website it'll automatically have that in here um, one thing that I like too here is this very first box HTTP colon forward slash forward slash I always make it www and this goes back to when we're backlinking whenever we're making our backlinks if you don't make this www and you just leave it HTTP whenever you make your backlinks you want to make sure that it's whatever it is you have here Google does look at these different if it's if you're making backlinks to www and you've left it this then it really doesn't count give you as much of a boost and count as much as if you were making it the same all right um, indirectly that blank leave this blank site name you can go back and change this later you can get you can access to this on in WordPress itself and then this next box here is very important especially if you're not using a2 hosting this is the most this is the easiest way for hackers to get into your website so when it comes to admin username I like to make this something very difficult I like name it a couple of my pet names and add in my age or my kids age and I'll throw in an exclamation point and some other things like that and then the same thing with the admin pass password I don't like using what they have I always generate my own and then you've got to keep up with this info I always I've got this in a uh, spreadsheet because I've got so many websites that I have to keep up with you might want to write it down whatever you got to do to make sure you don't lose this information okay um, admin e admin email I usually leave that alone and then also here at the bottom before I click install I also put in another email address where I want this information sent to so that I still got another backup of knowing you know what my information is here all right and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out real quick okay so I've entered in what I want it to be I'm gonna click install and it's gonna install it it'll take it a couple minutes and again I'll be right back while it gets the job done alright so it started it started it finished installing and you can see here that the administrative URL this is how to log into the back side and this is one reason I like a2 hosting because this does this right off the bat on a lot of the other host sites your your login is going to be whatever your domain is forward slash WP admin it makes it easier for hackers to find where you're at this way they've got to really search and then even with this I'm gonna change this I'm gonna make it much harder the harder it is for them to get in the better off you are okay so when you click on that it's gonna take you here and you're gonna put in your information that you entered in when you started it I can remember what I did and then this is another thing I like too by a2 is right away it, gets, it puts in this captcha to what's making it even harder for hackers to get to your site you can click this also so remember me so next time it'll remember this information but you'll still have to do the captcha
and we're in. First thing I do when I get to a site, there's a couple things, okay? First thing I do is go to settings, reading, and discourage search engines from indexing the site. Reason being is I don't want them looking to see what I'm doing before I'm ready. I don't want them to start indexing it and nothing be there because I don't know how long it's going to take them to come back around. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Next thing we are going to do is go to users. Now on some themes that you use, when you make a post, the post will put up the username that you sign in with, which I don't like at all. Not all themes do that, but some themes do. So one thing that I like to do is go here and make a nickname you can put your name in if you want or just you know your first name and initial or whatever and then display name publicly as and pick that and update it now when you make a post it won't be putting what your username was to sign in Okay, so we're done here. Let's go back to settings. And it's general settings. Remember I told you when we were creating the WordPress, the WordPress database and the host that you could change your site title and tagline right here. Okay. And actually too here you can also if you didn't put the WW in when you first did it, you can do it here now. And make sure they're both the same. All right. Writing, I don't really do anything here. Reading. Now, this is going to come down to really what you're wanting to do. I set most of mine to be a static page. I haven't set up any pages yet, so I'm going to leave it at post. I'm going to have my home page and then, you know, about us, the contact, all the disclaimers. And then we'll have you know a post page. So we'll set that at a stack page, and you know the front page is going to be your home page. All right. And why is this off? We search engine visit discourage search engine. That's I thought I clicked that already. Save to me. I didn't save it. So we'll save that. These are the only other one I touch is permalinks. Permalinks, I like to leave as post name. You know, see, it'll change it here. Reason being is it makes it nice and clean. Whenever you make a post, your pages, whatever, it'll be that name. will be right here. And Google likes to index that better. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go up here. Dashboard. Let's go ahead and get a theme. Now, themes, there's a bunch of free themes and there's a bunch of paid, paid for themes. And... There's a boatload of them. Um, you can come here and change your theme completely. For now, we're just going to pick a free theme. You can see 2014 is, is what comes on it. In fact, I can do this. Is open a link in new tab, and you can see here it is. All right, this is what we got going on so far. Nothing really. See why I don't want the search engines looking at this? So... We are going to add, click up here, add new. And a lot of times what I do is this, is feature filter. For when I'm building other sites, we'll just pick something here, say, like, blue. Go to filter, let's just find something real quick. We'll go with this one. Activate. And there it is. Now we click here. Now you see what it looks like. Uh, one other thing you want to do 
Let's check this. Down here at the bottom, see this? WordPress theme by Everlong Design. We don't want that. We want to get rid of that. Reason being is we're going to lose link juice to these guys. And we don't want that. All the links that we build going to our site are actually going to pass through and go to this, which we don't want to do. So go back here. And we are already on appearance. We go to Editor. Come over here and go to Footer. Now, on some of these themes, this will be a whole lot of information here. If you've never done anything like this, I suggest that you copy the whole thing and put it on the clipboard, put it on a notepad or whatever you're using. Copy the whole thing, paste it, put it in there. I've done this a few times before though, but I, so I know all this right here is it, Ahref. So I'm going to take all of that right there and delete it and then update the file and then come here refresh the page and it's gone now sometimes if you if you delete that whole entire footer it'll mess it up it'll get rid of all the widgets on the side and you don't want that and then on some of the themes if you go and delete that also it will uh it won't like it some of these guys that are doing these themes they want they want that going back to them so i wouldn't i'd find another theme and a lot of the, a lot of the themes that you pay for they'll have it in there where you can automatically just take it out all right so we're done there next we are going to go to let's just go ahead and get the plugins Now this is why I like A2. All right, it's got this automatically in here. A2 is really good about caching stuff, and they actually even have this already in here, in the settings. I usually don't mess with it, and also the rename WP login. That's what's changing logging in from the back end, so it won't be your website forward slash WP slash admin. All right, so you can go here. And remember, I told you I was going to change it and right here it is that's what it was originally and now I'm going to change it to something else so actually I changed the mind I'll wait and change this later but whenever you make any changes here on every page always click save changes on anything where you make a change otherwise they won't save but I want to go back and show you one thing with the um, themes if you've purchased one And you download it, you go to add new, and then upload theme instead of coming over here to search. Okay? Now let's go ahead and go to plugins. Let's get through this. I know some of you probably used WordPress before, and this might be kind of redundant, but some of you may not have. Alright, so I want to add new a, a new plugin. A lot of these plugins that I use are free. So you can go right here. First one I'm going to put in is there enter it's this one here click OK activate and there it is right there And there's one more I'm going to show you. I've got a bunch. But I'm going to show you this one because I do not activate this one as soon as I upload it. I like to do all the, the uh, plugins to get them out of the way. There I go. Google XML sitemaps. Reason being is I don't want to generate a sitemap for them yet and notify Google of any changes. And this is it. So then I'll just return the plugin installer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install all these plugins, and I'll come back and show you what I've installed, what I like to use, and uh, I'll also show you a couple that I that I pay for. And I'll be back in a minute. 
All right, I'm back. I went ahead and made this slide on Keynote. And um, these are the plugins that I use. Of course, you saw me install all in one SEO, and I want to show you that real quick. When you go to your pages, it's a sample page. And here's be your title. All right. And it's just uh, whatever they've got in there. Um, you'll take your title, copy and paste it right here, and then a description. You have right there, it tells you 60 char characters for the title, 160 characters for the description. Keywords down here, I mean, they don't, Google really doesn't go by this anymore. They're going more by this and this. We'll get more into this in the future because there's quite a bit to this and how you lay this out and what you say in there. Uh, of course, you know, you want to make it to where people are going to click it, but at the same time, you want to get keywords in there. But you don't want to stuff it. You don't want to say the same thing over and over. Uh, you want to say it in as many different ways as possible, if that makes sense to you. And then also, when you come up here to also, I mean, all in one SEO, the general settings. I don't mess with this. I leave this alone. Here, the home page title, I'll do this home description and keywords also and the same thing applies here 60 characters and what was it 160 here and then this is something important down here you see page title format all these right here everywhere where it says blog title I delete that the reason being is if oops, if um you have a long title say your post title or your page title then it puts the name of your blog at the end of it and it might break it off and it just it looks funny and we're trying to make it pleasing to the eye and I notice I get better clicks this way so I'll go ahead and I delete all those I'm not gonna do that now and you need to come down and update options and then that's done okay <sighs> disable comments no Google XML sitemaps I, you know, I've installed it, but I'm not activated until I'm ready to launch. We'll get back to that in a second. So, you know, you can install it. Like I said before, I like to go ahead and install all my plugins at once and just be done with it. But I don't activate this one. Disable comments. I have a lot of affiliate websites where, you know, I'm just making money for people that fill in an email or buy something. On those sites, I don't like having comments. Um people are going to try and leave comments and they're going to try and leave a uh, a link back to their site and they're, you know they're spamming you they're trying to steal your uh, pretty much get your link juice um, when you go to that disable comments when you first load it it'll tell you that it'll tell you up here that it's not configured to do anything I've got it set already to to um, disable them everywhere okay you can set it here and have it so that it's just on pages and media however you want to run your blog it's up to you okay but I'm gonna set it for everywhere it's way I always do mine um just go back to plugins here link juice keeper Link juice by redir redirecting all non-existing URLs, which are normally return a 404 error to the front blog page using 301 redirect. I'm not going to get into all the explanation of that, but trust me, you want to have that. It's doing just that, helping keep the link juice on your site. Okay. Legal pages. Now, if you're to hire an attorney to do your legal pages for you, it can get quite expensive. However, if you're just doing just one site, it's well worth it. Reason being is there's there's plugins you know there's one free plugin for legal pages, but what what I'm my concern with it is is a panda penalty. Panda the panda update from Google is for duplicate content and pretty much crappy content content that, that doesn't read well. All right, so if you go ahead and get you know there's also um, legal page ones that you can pay for. There, I mean there's there's quite a few of them. So if you use the free one or you buy one, I'm going to suggest you do this. And especially if you're serious about doing SEO, 
you're going to want to invest in this tool right here spin rewriter um what it does what you can do is you'll have to you know get an account i can't remember how much it is i i I bought a lifetime subscription some years back. I'll have to look it up and maybe I can put it in the bottom of the post or something. But what you can do is you can go in here once you've got it set up. You can go in here and let's give you a quick example. Um, she's a realtor. I found a great If I could type. with that start the rewrite and then one click I usually leave a set at medium and you can see it's gone in through all these words I should have shown you before and it made these words green where I found great Realtor and you can actually go in there and manually look at one and see the different words that are available but for this example we're just going to go with this continue the final step here it is here journey a unique version and you can see right here 97 percent unique compared to original text i discovered an excellent realtor in dallas they assisted me sell my residence quick see it's not quite right they assisted me in i think that'll work in selling my residence quick Quick Lee. Now for some of the links that you're gonna do, you're gonna build, that would have been fine what was there originally. But on your website, no, it needs to read right. It needs to be the grammar the best that you can make it. Okay. So yeah, I would su seriously suggest in investing in this tool if you're serious about doing your own SEO. It'll just help you in the long run. Because when you're doing a lot of links, it can get stupid expensive for uh original content and there's some of the lesser links that we're not as concerned about you're going to want to have this tool all right back to this all right so with the uh you'd want to take whatever disclaimer page that that plugin will generate for you and put it into the spin rewriter and hit the generate and then you'll generate a unique version put it on your on your uh, page you know name it this disclaimer page and then go through it and make sure that it reads well okay I know it sounds like a lot it kinda is but it's well worth it in the end you don't want to start off right from the beginning getting a, a panda penalty some sort of backup plugin there's a bunch of them out there um, you're gonna wanna there's they're free you can upload one most of them will, will allow you to go ahead and create a backup and download it keep it on your machine They'll also have a paid service to where you can store it offline. They'll keep it for you. Some of the hosts will actually do a backup for you also. I never trust those. On all of my money sites, I have a backup myself that I download and keep it on my machine. And I'm backing up to a hard drive. And I also have stuff stored offline um, with that. Okay, Spider Spanker Pro. This one's very important. This is paid. Again, I can't remember what I paid for this. I bought this years ago, and I'm still using it. What this does is this prevents people from taking your URL, URL and putting it in tools and looking at your backlinks and see what you have going on and basically duplicating what you've done and then one-upping you. Okay. So what I've done is I went ahead and I just did a real quick search, a broad search for mechanic. I pulled up Mike the Mechanic, this first guy here. I have no idea who he is. I'm not in this niche. I go to this tool here I use. I've got several of these that I use. It's a paid subscription. I put him in. I can see right here. His trust flow is pretty bad. Um, external leaks. Referring domains, not that many. His, it really isn't that good. I can look at his anchor text, what he's using for anchor text. These are the links that he's placed on other places that point back to his website, which is it's kind of weird. Lemon squeezers, but you know he's branding himself, which is good. You should have some more that says like "click here, more info" to make sure he doesn't get a uh, a penguin penalty. But then I can also look 
at where he's placed his links. And in theory, I could go, in theory, I could go to every one of these places and place a link also going back to my to my website, so that spider spanker will keep that from happening. And I'm going to go ahead and take you to that right now too, because I want to show you some more cool stuff. Now, you'll have to when you first log into it. Once you've installed it, you'll have to put in your license, and then it'll bring you to this page here. And what I usually do is for good spiders like Google and Bing and all those, I throttle them because they can hang up your site. I've seen them hang up before and it'll really slow down your site and it might take them a while to get off. Excuse me, that can be a problem on an affiliate site, a site that you're getting a lot of traffic to. And then usually what I do is 408 request timeout, say the settings. He has a uh, tutorial that'll go through and he'll give you like uh, more user agents that he blocks and also IP ranges but another thing that I really like about this is that right off the bat it's gonna block Russia North Korea and China where most spammers come from okay so let me go back to plugins before I leave alright so if you're using A2 that's pretty much what we want to use if you're not using A2 you can get the renamed WP login for free and uh, also WordPress super cache and that what that does is it helps your website load faster like I said you're at the rate your website loads is is a ranking factor okay so that will pretty much get you up and going all right now at a minimum to launch your website I know some of you are going to want to just jump right in here and be gung-ho. We haven't covered anything on keywords, any kind of keyword research or any of that, but I, I just know people are going to want to jump in and get going on this. Your content on your homepage, you want it to be 100% unique. Okay, um, Don't be going to other people's websites and copy and pasting stuff directly in. That'll That's going to trigger that panda penalty. Okay, and you're gonna right off the bat, you're gonna have a penalty and not be able to rank. Um, at the minimum for your legal pages, you want to have the disclaimer privacy policy in terms of use. And again, you know, go to you know the spin rewriter if it's a plugin that you've downloaded and got it to generate the the pages for you. Go ahead and spin them and make them as unique as possible. If you have to, if you can't come up with enough content for your homepage, for your homepage. I recommend at least 800 to 1,000 words of unique content. If you can't come up with that much and you've got to go and basically steal from somebody else, make sure you do take it and put it in that spin rewriter and spin it and make sure that it reads right, that you, it's, it's easy, easily readable. Okay. And then also you're going to want to have a contact page with a minimum of an email. You don't have to put in a phone, phone number, but you're going to want to have an email. Okay. Now, once you've done that, you have this done. This is the minimum to have on your website to go ahead and launch it. What I usually do is before I before I publish the home page, you know, I'll leave it in in draft mode. And before I publish it, you know, I have all these pages will probably be published. Before I do that, I'll go back and I'll go to settings gotta remember to do this otherwise it's not gonna get read so I'm gonna get picked up I'll turn this off and then I'll go back to the plugins and now is when I'll activate the site maps And I'll come over here to settings in the sitemaps. And you can see it hasn't been notified yet. But now when I go back to my pages, and if I had a home page, you know, I would uh, go ahead and, and go to edit. And here it would, it would say update draft or something like that. And here it would say publish. 
and I hit that publish and that should make this if you go back to the plugins once you publish it that should go ahead and notify Google and Bing about the changes if it doesn't if this says still says the same thing search engines have not been notified you can go ahead and click this and it'll do it right then all right so that's basically the minimum that you want to have on your site as far as plugins and, and to protect yourself and as far as content to uh, to get some Google love now as far as really making your website real pretty right from the beginning I, I usually don't do that um, especially if it's just a uh, affiliate site that I'm doing because it's not gonna get found um, I use it on any of my affiliate sites I don't worry about making them look pretty until they're at least on page two um, if it's a client site yeah I might make it look a little bit prettier but, but explain to them also that no I'm not gonna finish it all there's more things that we need to, there's more important things that we need to be doing besides worrying what the site looks like because it's it's brand new it's gonna take a while for Google to index it and much less get it to where somebody's gonna find it I mean think about it. when's the last time you did some kind of Google search and went past page one so um, you know don't go crazy starting backlinking yet first thing you want to do is make sure that Google indexes the site and what you can do is come up here and put in site I'll do it for you right now put in site and that and then your URL whatever it is um, mine would be MDIMS test site dot info hit search and what it'll do is it'll come up and it'll show you what they've indexed and you want to make sure that all the pages that you have published are indexed once those are indexed then you can start thinking about doing some backlinking and actually really if on a brand new site I won't start backlinking it right away I'll go and start making some social media properties and start pointing to it which makes sense to the search engines because if you've got a brand new site that's pretty much most what most people are going to do they want to you know show it off you know start driving traffic to it and they're going to start in social media with like YouTube Facebook Twitter and all the bazillion others Yelp all that all right so there you have it I told you it wasn't real sexy it's a little bit nerdy but it's got to be done if you're wanting to you know maybe do your own blog if definitely if you want to do any kind of SEO work all this stuff is very important all right next week is probably going to be on keyword research all right and I encourage you to go ahead and play around on your site that you've created you know play with the menus and all that it's really not that easy to break the site if you do there's there's so much free information on the on the internet about how to fix it okay so till next week on our next post we'll see you then and in the meantime if you have any questions or comments you want to get in touch with me want to know if you want to tell me what you want to know about you can email me at questionsforken at mdims.org. Again, thanks. I'm Ken Mandich, and I look forward to seeing you in the next post.